In fact, somebody asked me, what's the difference between men and women Kabbalistically? I said, men are waffles, women are spaghetti. <laughs> Very deep Kabbalah. Do you ever eat a waffle? Waffles, every waffle is self-contained. It has four walls around it. When you pour the maple syrup into the waffle, you make sure it doesn't go over the wall and stays within the square of the waffle. That's men. Women are spaghetti. There's no one piece of spaghetti. Every strand of pasta is intertwined and interconnected with hundreds of other pieces of pasta. Our brain is compartmentalized in hundreds of filing cabinets. We men have a filing cabinet called the car, the house, the wife, the mother-in-law, the children, the job, the therapist. Everything has a separate filing cabinet. And when we have to pay a bill, we open up that filing cabinet. We make sure it doesn't touch any other file. We take out the paper. Usually we don't do anything. We put it back quietly. We close the drawer and we make sure nothing else gets disturbed. And in the middle of our brain, we have a huge filing cabinet, the biggest one with a big sign and it says on it, nothing. <laughs> and we love hanging out in that space. In fact, most of us men, if we wouldn't have to make a living, we would hang out in that filing cabinet called nothing. So when you ask your husband, what are you feeling? <laughs> and he looks at you and he says, nothing. <laughs> And there's no answer that drives women as crazy as the answer, nothing. They can't believe it. They think you have another relationship with somebody else. They think you are hiding everything. No women, we feel nothing. In fact, after this lecture, you're going to ask your husband, so how was it? And he's going to look at you, how was what? He was talking about you! Oh, here she goes. He doesn't know me. How was it? Oh, his jokes were not too bad. Most of them I knew. By a woman, there's no nothing. Her brain is like the World Wide Web. Microsoft Windows with every possible window open. And the tab is switching back and forth every moment like spaghetti. And the traffic of the World Wide Web, there are hundreds of millions of neurons consciously interacting at every single moment. And he's like clueless. Which is why you'll see the following scene. He comes on one night. And he decides tonight he's going to be a good husband. So after dinner, you sit down with him on the couch. And he looks you in the eyes and he says, Honey, do you want to share with me how your day was? You're like, wow, what a guy. He's been listening to Rabbi YY's lectures. He's been working on himself. Ah, Emmet has been getting to him. He's working, he's working on his shalom bayit. It's so beautiful. So you start sharing with him your day. And of course, you begin with the fact that the cleaner's ruined a $600 dress. And he opens up the filing cabinet called Cleaner. And it's a, it's, a, it's a hard process for him. You could see on his brain. He said, take it out and take out the file and check off, okay, the cleaner's crisis is $600. From the cleaners, you shift immediately to the fact that you don't like your job. So now he opens up the filing cabinet called the job. And then you move on to the fact that your sister-in-law insulted you at her son's bar mitzvah. And then the fact that at the Sheva Brachas you weren't invited. And then that his mother is really obnoxious to you. From there you discuss the fact that you don't have good cleaning help. And then of course you go to the kids. He's not happy in third grade. The principal is not nice. This teacher doesn't know what he's doing. Then you go to the car. Then you go to the paper you have to finish. You discuss the leak in the bathroom. Summer plans. Your own mother. Your own sister. The upcoming bas mitzvah. It's now two minutes 
and 10 seconds. You have already explored 48 topics. And this is what he's doing. He's opening and closing filing cabinets. He went from the cleaners to the bathroom, to the cleaning lady, to your mother, to your sister-in-law, to the bar mitzvah, to the bas mitzvah, to the chuppah, to your job, to your paper, to your car, to the swimming pool, to the summer, to the camp, to the crisis in school. It's four minutes now. 397 topics have been explored and you're just beginning. This poor guy for the last four minutes has been opening and closing filing cabinets and remember, nothing can touch anything else. So he takes it out, it's mummish, a very, very heavy game. Now after four minutes, as you're about to begin topic 400, he is about to go crazy. The logical choice for him at this moment, the most logical thing is suicide. (laughs) There's a problem, he loves you. And he doesn't want you should be a widow. So that's not an option. So he does the second to the best option under these trying circumstances. And that is, he falls asleep. (laughs) And within 20 seconds, within 20 seconds, he's snoring on the top of his lungs. And you're stone-faced. You were just having this whole romantic experience and this guy just fell asleep on you you are so hurt little do you know that the snoring is an expression of his deepest love because the only other option was to him for him to shoot himself in his head and the only reason he didn't is because he loves you so much so if you could look at the snoring and say what a special man The love of my life, my dearest partner. Ah! You're good. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.